There's so much more. <laughs> there is so much more. And one night the Lord gave me a night vision, the first of last year. This night vision, I was in this clothing store and I was just looking. And when I started to leave, I didn't find what I really wanted, whatever it was. I don't even know what I was looking for, but I didn't find it. And I started to leave, and as I started to go out the door, the lady at the cash register, she says, I have what you're looking for right here. And I looked, and it was a royal blue dress. And it was so beautiful, it had... It was long like this, and it had uh, a row of buttons all the way up the front, and every button had a diamond in it, a real diamond. I said, there's no way I can afford that. She said, but this is exactly your size. It's for you. It was made for you. I said, I can't afford it. And I knew God was showing me something in the spirit because... I never could have afforded that in the natural. And she said, with this dress, I tried it on and it exactly fit me. She said, with this dress comes a purse, a special purse. And she opened it up and she showed me. She said, in this purse is a secret place where you can keep all of your valuables. Nobody will be able to find this place in this purse but you. You're the only one that will know it's there. I knew that was spiritual. And I went on and I thought about it. I knew it was all spiritual, something God was showing me. A place that God had especially for me. And he has a special place in Christ, hid away with Christ in God for every one of us. Every one of us, there's a place for us. And it fits us. That's what the Lord was telling me about the dress, that it just fits you. It was made for you. And it, every one of you have desires. You have a longing. If you are a Christian, there is a longing in you for more of God. And you feel that God has something especially for you. How many of you feel that? God has something especially for you. And nothing else will fill that place in your heart. Nothing else takes God to fill it. That secret place in God, I long for that place. I want to be hid away with Christ in God. And God put a desire in me from that night vision to long for that place, to be hid away with Christ in God. The people that God is making to be his bride. Do you realize that Jesus, everywhere he went, he fit in? He just fit in. If he was talking to Mary Magdalene, he knew exactly how to minister to her and to her needs. If he was talking to Matthew, the publican, the tax collector, he knew exactly how to minister to Matthew. So whoever God sends you to minister to, you're gonna need to know how to reach that person. Focus on that person. Focus on their needs, where they are. Not where you are, but where they are. Because in this millennium, we are going to have a worldwide ministry. I'm not talking about big wheels. I'm talking about every one of us. Every one of us is going to have to have a worldwide view. But God says, you are going to learn to yield. You're going to let my Holy Ghost, my Spirit, clothe you spiritually, equip you spiritually, minister to you spiritually so that you can minister to others. Paul said, when it pleased the Father to reveal his Son in me, you first have to have him revealed in you. Not to you, but in you. There's a difference. It's not head knowledge. It's not head knowledge up here. It's something that you have in you, in your spirit, that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is real, that he is God. But he's God in you. That's where God's bringing us to. We have to know that he's God in us. Every one of us. 
There's no little I's and there's no big U's in the kingdom of God. He's making every one of us, he wants every one of us to become adaptable. He said just Jesus didn't change who he was just because he ministered to Mary Magdalene. He didn't lower himself and become like her. He stayed the son of God, but he bowed to minister to her on her level so she could receive and so she could become also a son of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came from heaven and he became like us that he might take us where we are and bring us up to what he is. Hallelujah. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Hallelujah. He loves every one of us. There's not a one here that is out of his love. And God is preparing us, getting us ready. And we're going to be the early church is not going to have the glory, did not have the glory that this latter house is going to have. Right now you may not think you even come close. You don't have to think it. God's doing the work. If you think you're something, then you're nothing. But when God does the work, and when he finishes the work, we will be, <laughs> we will be what he has called us to be. God is going to have a body. He's the head. He is going to have a body of people that flows so perfectly together in the spirit. Flows and moves by the spirit of God that he can use in this hour. And that's going to be God's secret weapon against the powers of the Antichrist. We talk about freedom. There is freedom in the Holy Ghost. The glorious liberty of the sons of God. Glorious liberty. A freedom in God. But it's not freedom for the flesh. It's freedom for the spirit. And discipline in the natural prepares the spirit for God. The fourth chapter of Ephesians. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord... Now, that's a great beginning here. You would think Paul has reached a place in God and he is in prison. <laughs> he is in prison. Has God forsaken him? He is there for a purpose. He wrote the greatest words of the Bible while he was in prison. Didn't he do it? Some of the greatest depths heights in God for prison. I beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. What was the vocation? Being a Christian. The ultimate in this life is to be a Christian. Whether in prison, out of prison, in church, wherever God puts you, be a Christian above everything else. Christ-like on the job, in the school, in the home, saints. A lot of people can be a Christian at church, but what about in the home? With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, or bearing one another in love. What does that mean? Others have faults, you have faults, but be long suffering, be forbearing with them. Patience is very important in the kingdom of God. In your patience possess ye your soul. And if you lose your patience, you can very easily lose your soul. We need to know that in this hour. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. It's very important to keep the unity. And the word he uses here is endeavoring. Endeavoring means put forth an effort. Anybody listening? Amen. To keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is only one body of Christ. There's only one Spirit, and that's the Spirit of God. 
And the Spirit of God is a Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit. It's not an unholy spirit. It is a peaceful spirit. It is a loving spirit because God is love. And if you don't have a loving spirit and I don't have a loving spirit, I don't have God's love. And I don't have God. It's that simple, isn't it? Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. Now, it's going to be easy to keep the unity of the Spirit if we all have the Spirit. You getting there? If you have the Spirit of God, then it'll be easy to keep the unity in the Spirit. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us has grace for whatever need you have. Whatever need there is in your life. God told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Wherefore he said when he ascended up on high, he, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. When he died on the cross, he took the devil and made him captive Amen. and he set us free. Amen. We are no longer under uh, the devil's dominion. We are no longer under his power. Right. If you're a child of God, God's grace to you sets you free. His love, his redemption sets you free and the devil has no dominion over your life. We need to know that at all times, no matter what the situation is. We are the ones who are free. If the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. And he gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended into the heavens, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? But it says that Jesus, his spirit, went to hell. This is not preached very often. But it means that he first descended as low as you can go. I don't care how low a sinner has sunk in sin, how low he is. God, through the love of Jesus Christ, descended as low as they have gone, that he might bring them up, that he might lead captivity captive and set them free and make them sons of God. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended. He went as low as you could go, and then he went as high as you can go. Far above all heavens, there is not a galaxy, not even a brand new galaxy anywhere in space that Jesus Christ has not already conquered. He ascended far above all heavens that were, have been, and ever will be. Hallelujah. He is above all things. That's the God we are serving, saints. He went to the lowest and he uh, absolutely conquered every foe, every demon, every devil, every sin, everything. He conquered it. And then he ascended far above all heaven. And you know what he's doing? He's taking us with him. As he ascends, he's taking us with him. He's bringing us up to that level. He's already gone and prepared the way, and now he's taking us into the heavens with him. We are already seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You say, well, no, I'm right here on this earth. Well, have you checked lately? The earth is in the heavens. I think about it. The sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth is hanging out here in space. That's the heavens. So we are already seated together with him in heavenly places if you are in Christ. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for a reason. 
for the perfecting of the saints. Jesus is perfect. He said, be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And I believe it can be so. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, that means that the work of and ministry of Jesus Christ will be accomplished on this earth in our day. You say, well, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an evangelist. You are whatever you will allow God to help you to become. You can be whatever God chooses for you to be. Let him make you. And for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all, I want you to take your pen or pencil and encircle all. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, that's not enough. Also to the knowledge of the Son of God. Now he's not talking about just knowing about the Son of God. He is not in a manger and he is not hanging on a cross. He has ascended into the heavens. He is Lord of lords and King of kings. He is the glorified Son of God. Victorious over all the powers of the enemy. And that includes what's going on in our lives too. Hallelujah. Unto a perfect man. Listen, if you have faults, if you have failures, if you have weaknesses in your life, God will help you with them. Because God wants every one of us to come to that perfect man. All right, who is the perfect man? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Unto the measure, what does measure mean? Length, breadth, depth, and height. That's how you measure it. The length of it, the breadth, the depth, and the height. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. How many of us? All of us. All. And that doesn't leave anybody out. Every one of us. To the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ. Saints, this is the new millennium. This is a new dispensation. Are you hearing me? A new dispensation. This dispensation is the dispensation of the fullness of God. Did Jesus have the fullness of God? The Bible says the fullness of God dwelt in him bodily. You say, well, the fullness of God can't dwell in me. Do you have a body? Anybody here have a body? Did you know that you are the only creature God created that can contain God? Your body was made to contain God. God is a triune being. Spirit, God the Father, Jesus Christ the manifested God, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God himself. The same spirit that was in Jesus Christ, the same spirit that is in us. If Jesus Christ came to the measure of the fullness of God by the Holy Ghost, what makes you think you can't come to the fullness of God with the Holy Ghost? That's what was in Christ. That's what he used. He did not use deity. He used the power of the Father that dwell in him. It was the Holy Ghost. And he had the fullness of God in him. If we're to come to the measure of the fullness of Christ, that means we too are to have the fullness of God in us bodily, in our bodies. I'm not preaching anything above your heads. It's all in the scripture. That we be no more children. Let me go on with it here. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to the to deceive. It's very hard to deceive a person that knows the Bible. Nobody that can come against the Word of God. The Word is God. And when you have that word in you like Jesus Christ, it is written. It is written. You don't grow overnight. Every 
Every trial, every test, every temptation brings you closer and closer and closer to God. Until you come. Jesus grew 30 years, didn't he? He grew 30 years in stature, in favor with God and man, in wisdom, until he came to the fullness. This is the hour for the fullness. Does anybody have a hunger for the fullness? Is anybody, have you set a goal to be one of them that'll be in the body? That wants to be a part of the body? If there's anything that you know of in your heart, in your mind, in your life that would hold you back, that would hinder you in any kind of way from being in that body, now is the time to allow the grace of God the redemption power of Jesus Christ to work in you and on you until you get to that fullness. That's exactly what I want to be. And that place in God that he showed me, that secret place, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, what does it say? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In the hour we're living in, saints, you're going to need to abide in the shadow of the Almighty. There is so much going on in this world. So much is happening. So much is going on in this world. You're going to need to be in that secret place with God. You are living in the greatest time that has ever been since the Garden of Eden. God is endeavoring to bring this whole earth back under subjection to God. Not just man, but all that he has created. Bring it all back. He's going to have the people to work with him to do that. Jesus is coming back, but he's going to have a people. His work is before him, the Bible says. And that means he has the work to do. And he's going to have to have a people to use. To work for in the church and we're going to shine before the whole world before this millennium is over with we are going to be like a city set on a hill that the whole earth is going to see the glory of god shining through his church and through his body of people now, the revelation of jesus christ was to bring us to the place of being in perfect harmony with God in spirit, soul, and body, in perfect unity and perfect harmony under subjection to God. Spirit, soul, and body include your mind, your emotions, and your will. And if your mind, your emotions, and your will are under subjection to the Spirit of God, then your mind, emotions, and your will will bring the body under subjection to God. You see what I'm saying? God wants us in perfect harmony, perfect unity, precision, working together as a perfect body, a unit, a team, working together. I want to be that. God bless you this morning.